Well, when I started selling cars, this was way back before any type of technology. Um, and when I ended up uh, getting out of retail and joining a vendor, specifically a CRM company um, back in 2005, one of the biggest objections for us to sell at that time was that each dealership had to buy a computer for each desk. And it was crazy to think that just in the last 15 years that now everybody has a computer, everybody has a phone. Um, so it was like a big hurdle. And I think automotive dealerships as a whole were one of the last ones to really embrace technology. And uh, when we came out with our CRM at the time, uh, it was web-based and people were like, well, what happens if the internet goes down and is it safe? And nowadays we do banking and taxing and everything online. Um, so being able to see how dealerships have been able to incorporate technology that, I mean, I was brought up or you know taught in sales to use a Rolodex and to keep business cards. And you know the technology has allowed it easier for salespeople to manage their customers, uh, manage the follow-up, making sure nothing follows through the cracks. Um, so that's probably been one of the biggest changes. Uh, but then we've seen the birth of the website, third-party leads, all the way to digital retailing. Um, that's all revolved around technology. So as I mentioned, you know, technology has had a huge impact in automotive, specifically with dealerships, but it's not always been embraced welcomely. Um, CRMs, for example, um, very valuable. They manage all the customers and all the interactions and all the follow-up. But for most salespeople, they don't like the CRM. It's the tool that tells their managers that they're not doing a good job. Um, we have CRMs that are full of bad data because we required uh, the salespeople to fill out information that they didn't have or didn't ask. So then they ended up just putting that into the CRM to get to the next step. So although the CRM and the technology was great, salespeople who inherently weren't very tech savvy and didn't really understand the benefits or the long-term consequences of that, just put bad data into the system. And now as you're getting to uh, marketing and remarketing and retention advertising from data that's in the CRM, we're starting to see duplications, we're starting to see bad data, and it requires a third party company to come in and clean. Uh, so although it's got some great benefits, we've had some trials along the way. And another one of the struggles with technology is they've been built by technology people, and uh, they've come into the space and not really understood uh, the car buying process. It's, it's a unique uh, industry. And so a lot of the uh, complexities of these new softwares have required salespeople to have to, to learn how to use them. And people don't like to, in our industry, they don't like to learn new, new tools. Um, they don't like change. And so for that reason, uh, people don't really get to use the technology to its potential. Um, often that comes down to the responsibility of who is, who's responsible at the dealership for training people on use of technology? Is it the vendor? Is it a, a trainer, a sales manager? And so what happens is the sales people don't know how to use the tool as well as they need to. Management doesn't know how to use the tools as much as they're using. So they're paying for these tools, not getting a lot of value out of it, in all honesty, because they really don't know its potential. And you start seeing companies who are having, you know, uh, you're starting to see dealerships who are complaining about their technology. And it's usually because that people just aren't using it. And so, uh, again, a lot of benefits from technology, but if it's not easy to use, if it's not intuitive, and it's not providing value, then it just becomes a commodity that people use. So in regards to technology at the dealership, I think, you know, CRM has been the tool that all the salespeople use, it used to manage their leads and their ups and their follow-up. Uh, but historically in our industry, the DMS has been the hub of all data. And the problem with the DMS is it's a transactional-based software. Uh, it's outdated uh, data. Um, the most updated information is in the CRM, but yet we still do a lot of the marketing, the data pull from the DMS. And that's one of the reasons that we still get warranty calls on vehicles that we haven't owned for 15 years. And so, you know, hopefully there's a, an, a movement where the priority of data is the CRM because every interaction, um, even prospect data is in the CRM, which isn't in the DMS. Uh, the CRM has the ability to track every interest, every visit, every phone call, text, email, uh, you know, what they've bought, what they've looked at, their service history. And so there's a lot of data that's sitting in the CRM and it has sat in the CRM for 10, 15 years, but yet we still see dealers who the majority of their budget is, their ad budget is focused on driving conquest business and their reliance on third-party lead providers. 
And you know, you look at the leads that are coming in from these third-party lead providers, it's a vehicle of interest, an email address, and maybe a phone number. And some dealerships are paying even $20, $50 for this lead. They don't have any exclusivity. They're shopping multiple dealerships. And then we wonder why these are low-gross deals. And so what needs to happen is there needs to be more focus on the CRM. There's tons of data in there that if we mine it correctly, and, and more than just equity, because you know I think when we think about data mining, we think about people that are in equity, but there's just so much rich data that's available in the CRM that's neglected. Um, that if you export that data and use that into your marketing, you're gonna have better results because you're, you're sending the right message to the right person at the right time with a message that's relevant. And as we are seeing even changes with uh, privacy and with data, um, as we go to digital marketing and Facebook, who have audience builders to build out demographics, um, we're not gonna have that opportunity. Just in the last years, we've seen that shrink. Um, it's gonna be more of a reliance on the CRM data to export data and then import that into Google and Facebook to create audiences based off of your current database. And if that's performing well, then you can always create lookalike audiences for that. But um, if a, a dealership said, hey, we want to stop uh, Conquest, um, or even let's just say if the market changed and they weren't getting the leads, the dealerships that are gonna be the most successful are the ones that are gonna have the biggest database of customers that they can farm and and uh, and grow uh, because there's all this data there that's just n neglected um, and instead we're competing for leads that have very little information, that have very little growth, low CSI. So if you want to really focus and change um, and save money and be, you know, have better advertising, um, and better results, focus on your CRM. One of the big issues with data uh, historically has been who owns the data. Um, I'm a big believer that the data belongs to the dealership. Um, that historical sold transaction data resides in the DMS and unfortunately DMS companies have kind of held that hostage and charged uh, companies for integration or to have access uh, to that data. Um, luckily we've seen through lawsuits the opportunity for dealers to have control of that data. Uh, but you still have companies that are dependent on this data that require uh, third-party integration or APIs that the DMS company ends up charging uh, a lot of money uh, to access this data. And unfortunately, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we haven't seen a lot of new innovation in automotive is because a company that's probably, you know, uh, $800 to $1,000 product that could really revolutionize the auto industry, but it's dependent on DMS data, um, might have to pay $500, $800 just to access that data. And they look at that opportunity and say, why would we lose that, that margin? And so, uh, you know, they end up not picking a di different industry. Um, so, you know, looking at data, it belongs to the dealership. What we need is more dealers and vendors to work together and create more transparency and openness and have better opportunities through APIs and integration uh, that will allow for innovation uh, right now, everything is very siloed. And even with uh, as digital retailing has come into our market, um, there's data that's being captured with the digital retailing tool that no one knows what to do with it. Does it go into the CRM? Does it go into the DMS? Does it go into route one or to a lender? Um, we haven't really figured that out. And the data that the CRM companies are getting um, are coming through an XML ADF uh, format lead uh, that has been created years ago that hasn't been updated. And what happens is all of this like good, useful data that we have today, there's no place to put it and it gets crammed into the notes of the CRM. So having access to the data is one thing, having integration to that and openness is another, but we need to have more of a partnership and a willingness to work together. Otherwise, everything's gonna be very com compartmentalized. And we've even seen the struggles of this data as larger companies have acquired multiple companies, websites, CRM, DMS, who are still struggling on how to integrate all of those products and all of that data into one tool. So one of the issues that we've had in our industry is the fact that we don't separate shopping from buying. Uh, when we are marketing to a customer, we are design, we've designed the website and all the marketing to, for attribution, and it's all about lead capturing. So even when you're on a website and somebody's doing research, uh, a lot of times we don't even allow the customer to see the price. We advertise it with a click here for ePrice. The customer who is doing their research on the second most expensive thing that they'll ever buy, 
uh, wants to know if this car is in their market, they see the click here for e-price, thinking they're gonna get the price, they click on it, they get a form, we, they fill out the form, they click click here for e-price, thinking they're gonna get the price, and instead they get, hey, thank you for submitting a lead, somebody will reach out to you, and now their phone is blowing up with a sales rep who is trying to sell them. And I understand why they originally designed that way, because the dealerships wanted to capture the lead, but what it's done is it's pulled these people into buying who aren't really ready to buy. They're really shopping. And unfortunately, in our industry, tire kickers, people who are doing research, are looked down upon as people who are wasting the dealership's time. And we really need to look at providing the best experience for the customers by providing them with the information that they need, information about the vehicle. If they could get all the information on their own, they wouldn't need to come into the dealership, but they still need to come in because the dealership is the experts in the cars and they can answer all the questions in regards to performance and safety and features. The test drive is something that allows the customer to feel ownership and feel uh, that this is the car that they're gonna be driving in the future. And that's one of the issues with the digital retailing process is where does test drive fit into that? And so as we are looking at the difference between shopping and buying, I feel like there needs to be more opportunity to allow customers to shop to do their research without being pressured into buying. As we're talking about everything's going digital, one of the companies that come to mind is Apple. They're one of the most technology company, very digital. You can buy every single one of their products online, but when you go to the mall and you go to the Apple store, it's completely packed. And so that kind of proves to me that consumers aren't all about just buying everything online. But if you look at the Apple store and you look at the experience, you can try any product. You can test out things, there's no pressure, there's no salespeople. The people that are there selling uh, the Apple products are actually experts. They know more about the product than the customers. And that's what needs to change in our industry. It needs to be more of a customer uh, experience uh, event where you are helping the customer. You're uh, getting them to answer their questions, uh, understanding the vehicle and their needs, making sure that this is the right vehicle for them. Then once they decide that yes, this vehicle is the right vehicle, then we can go into the buying phase. But unfortunately, we've combined those and that's the frustration of the customers feeling pressured into buying when they're not really ready or the you know, negotiation process um, because we're, we're, the customer's not ready, they're still in the shopping phase. So in regards to advertising, I think one of the things that dealerships should do right away is uh, free themselves of their dependency on the third-party lead providers. Um, they're not getting the ROI and in ultimately they're spending money to drive traffic to their site that then is turning um, around and selling you that lead. And the dealership could use that same amount of money to drive and position themselves to be seen and then they control all of the traffic and the leads. So a dealership should be investing into their website. They should be investing in a very aggressive SEO strategy. And for anything that they're not ranking organically, they should have a strong pay-per-click campaign and display ads to really put themselves in a position to be seen. Facebook is another, and social media advertising is another great opportunity uh, because you have the ability to target a specific group with a specific message. And we know that there are a lot of people on social media, so it's a great place to see. Would I invest money in newspaper? Probably not because there's not a lot of people there. With social media, we know people are there, so that's why you wanna advertise on social media. Um, one of the things that I would say though, as you're looking as traditional, um, traditional still has its place. I feel like what you do offline should match what you're doing online and vice versa. So when you realize that you're running banners on your website, they should match the, the look and the feel of your display ads. They should match the look and feel of your ads that are on Facebook. And if somebody's in the car, they should be hearing that same message on the radio or when they're watching TV, they should see that same message. They're all working together. And I think one of the problems that we've had in our industry is we've compartmentalized all of the different advertising uh, channels and they're never working together. They're all working against each other. So if you could have more of a connected uh, plan, you can be more effective in regards to your, your budget. And then one of the shortcomings that I see with people who haven't had great results with their ROI, I think one comes down to what the strategy is. Are you trying to drive people to your website? Are you trying to be known? Are you trying to drive leads? A lot of times I feel like the dealership struggles on identifying exactly what their strategy is. Two, once you figure out what that strategy is, 
what's the best way to convert those? If your website is converting well, then send traffic to the website. If your, con your website is not converting well, we don't wanna send people to the website. We wanna maybe have them go through a click funnel through Facebook. So it's important that you have a good Google Analytics set up that you're looking at your reporting to know what's working because you're not always gonna drive people to your homepage. We wanna drive people to pages that are gonna convert. So if you have the strategy in place and you know exactly the plan that you're gonna do, the next thing is you have to have a good audience. You have to make sure that you're identifying the right people. Now with Facebook, one of the issues that I see is a lot of money and budget is wasted just trying to find the right audience. The same thing happens with people who don't spend enough money in their budget to really optimize the audience. The other thing that you can do from your CRM is export that data and create that as a custom audience. So once you have the strategy, the plan, and the audience, then you need good copy, you need good creative. And I've seen some great technology companies that have entered into the space, but they lack good creative or they don't understand advertising. It's important that you do all of this in order to have a good uh, advertising plan. If you just say, hey, I'm advertising on Facebook, my first question is, well, what's your strategy? What's your audience? What did the copy look like? What did your creative look like? If you don't do all of that, and you don't do all of that well, you're not gonna get the same results. For over 17 years, I've worked in the automotive industry and I've had the opportunity to interact with multiple vendors. And I'm always looking for the next greatest thing and I am drawn to technology that can actually benefit a dealership. And when I first encountered Dealers Gear, I was really impressed with the products that they were providing their dealers. The dealerships had great feedback in regards to the functionality and the way that it was built by dealers for dealers. Um, this introduced me to Dealers Gear and I had an opportunity to come on board as their CEO. And uh, one of the things that we are in the process of doing is building out a new automotive CRM. And we've had the luxury of being able to take a lot of feedback from dealers. Uh, they're frustrated uh, with their current tools. They don't see a lot of value. And uh, Dealers Gear has a reputation for creating cutting edge technology. So I thought if anyone was gonna be able to create a new CRM for automotive, Dealers Gear was the company and I wanted to be part of it. So Dealers Gear was really built based off the feedback of dealers. They were complaining that they didn't have a tool and they were getting approached by all of these companies, a company for Craigslist posting, a company for social media, a company for SEO, a company for websites. And the founder said, hey, you know what we need to do? We just need to do all of it, not have all the different vendors. And so he created Dealers Gear. And Dealers Gear is a all-in-one marketing platform that integrates websites, CMS, inventory, syndication, posting, SEO, social media, advertising, Google ads, and now CRM. We believe that having all of that together and all of the data that happens and integrates between that will allow us to be in a position to win. So Dealers Gear is a unique company where we provide so many different tools to dealerships. Everything from websites, SEO, CMS, inventory syndication, social media advertising. Uh, we even have some automated Google ads and ad management that can pause, alert, and adjust budget automatically. So you take all of this data that we have on top of all of the advertising services that we do, paid search, paid Google. Um, we even do uh, traditional advertising if it's necessary. We do BDC training, and now we do CRM. When you take all of this together, I think that we'll be in a position to provide the best product for dealerships uh, because it's based off their feedback. So we are providing them exactly the tools that they need based off the, fr fr based off the frustrations that they're currently having with their current tools.